If you look at it, we basically have two choices that we can take in life. We can choose heads, we can choose tails. We can step forward, or we can stand still. We can choose the red pill, or we can choose Hillary, or And of course, we can choose between the light side and the dark side. And that is a concept that I believe we should actually be teaching our children from a very young age. Is that the force, Sienna? Are you using the force? And then? Try and try and. Wow, you used the force, Sienna. Good girl. Oh, Good expert girl. level. Use the light side, Sienna. Um, <laughs> yeah, my tiny. Always with the, is it always with your eyes closed with the light side? Um, and now the dark side. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> In all seriousness, the existence of our daughter, Sienna, who is a little modern mer medical miracle, uh, is only down to another one of these kinds of choices. It's the choice between simply practicing medicine and innovating. And it's funny when you look at the word practice and you look at the word innovation, the word practice is where we repeat something that we accept as being good and we do it to perfection. And innovation is actually the diametric opposite. It's the disruption of what we practice. It's the disruption of the status quo in order to transform it. And I suppose you could frame that between the two words, or two phrases, exponential medicine and incremental medicine. Incremental medicine is what we have basically been practicing for two and a half thousand years. And in 2011, the concept of exponential medicine was brought to us by this group led by Daniel Kraft. It started off with 50 people. There are now 800 people five years later here. Hundreds of companies and research projects have been started. Thousands and thousands of lives have been transformed by the technologies and the projects that have been formed. I would argue that already millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars have either been saved in healthcare or repositioned to get better outcomes for people. In my own journey, I left exponential medicine in 2012 and went away thinking, just as we get taught, you can change a billion lives over the next 10 years and was very lucky to start a few very interesting ventures, one of which was one of the first Singularity University Labs companies, and many more. And it's given me a completely new framework to think about my medical practice, that it cannot exist without innovating. It actually even led, and you may have heard this during some other sessions from Professor Tony Young, to an entire national scale program where now doctors in the UK can actually learn this kind of thinking and this kind of way of innovating uh, as part of their medical training. I was asked to not just reflect on all the good stuff that has happened um, over the last five years, but also to think about where the next five years would be for exponential medicine. And that's a pretty hard thing to do because all these great thinkers and great technologies that we see evolving, they're kind of unpredictable in a lot of ways. So in order to answer the question, where will exponential medicine be in five years from now, I would like to invite you to a parallel universe where exponential medicine was not the choice we made. Incremental medicine is everything to me. I started with orange juice, and then we added protein. Well, it's amazing what you can do with incremental medicine. We've been applying it to prescription, 
you know, we were worried about polypharmacy. So what we did do is we decided to go slow. At age 40, we start with one medication. Age 50, double it to two medications. Age 60, four medications. When I first started clinical practice, we used digits to examine many orifices of many patients, but it was just the distal phalanx. Over the next 20 years, we've moved on to the middle phalanx, and now the proximal phalanx. We've come a long way. Age 70, we're at eight medications. Age 80, we're at 16 medications. With one in three people about to live to 100, we're gonna to get to 64 medications for our new Centurions. Amazing where we're getting the support for this program. We're finding pharma's calling daily, and they're very excited about this. I, I'm sad to say that, that we were having almost an epidemic of exponential thinking. And we, uh, we tried to come up with a vaccine, couldn't find a vaccine for exponential thinking. Um, we went to CRISPR-Cas9 to see if maybe we could genetically engineer this kind of disruption out of people's genome and out of how their brains are wired. Um, and we got stuck in the IRB. Well, this is one of the early prototypes of our dinosaur surgical robot. We wanted it to be able to communicate its emotions so that if it was necessary for it to express a temper tantrum or to start throwing instruments or any of the other things that we felt were critical about the way surgeons interact with their surgical staff. Um, so we decided the only way that we could really get our arms around this problem is to build a wall and not just any wall but a really, really huge wall. Well, I've been hearing a lot about this thing called artificial intelligence and how that's gonna play a big role, but I don't know how to spell that. We gave it legs for locomotion so that it could come into the operating room under its own power, and the mouth is full of dexterous manipulation so that it can move and make all of the motions that we would expect the human hand to make to be able to manipulate surgical instruments. I mean, I'm working on snail juice okay. because it has this extra sort of progress element. Oh, yeah. It's shiny, so it can make your hair shiny. Is, is it influenced at all by our logo? Or? I know, I mean, that's my copyright. What we're also seeing is a convergence, a convergence of new problems, multiple problems, multiple diagnoses. It's amazing what you can do with incremental medicine. Off the record, um, you know, the biggest problems we have in healthcare is, is of course, the patient. They don't, they don't, they're not compliant. They want their data. They, they, they want the data that, that we use to take care of them, and they want it mm. themselves. Yeah, it's so and, and, and it's extraordinary. Mm. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I know. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, unimaginable. Vinokosla, what is the secret to your investment success? The key to success is only investing in things that will make a 1% difference over the next decade. Professor Larry Smart. How has incremental medicine affected the advancement of medical science, in your opinion, over the last five years? Well, it's been so fantastic because, you know, I've been collecting my stool and storing it away for probably 10 years now. And, oh my God, it's just so great. You know, we're getting all this variation in color and consistency and so forth. But then I realized, like a, a gram has a billion bacteria and each of those have five million DNA bases. I said, I'm in the wrong business. This is a storage medium. And so we're just gonna disrupt the whole hard disk uh, industry by just storing everything in the, in, the, in the stool. And the thing is, we can crowdsource it. You can all be part of this. Just send your stool to me. Ciao, Fiorman. As ever, thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm just going to end very quickly by saying three things. <clears throat> do not underestimate the power of exponential technologies. Do not underestimate the importance of the community around exponential medicine. It's not just your individual thinking, it's thinking of all of you together. So when you leave here, try to do what we've done every year, which is spread the word and get this thinking going, whether it's you as a patient, you as a provider, you as a payer, you as an investor. It's an extremely important thing that, that Daniel and the crew have started here. So please don't underestimate the importance of yourselves. And I think finally, never underestimate the power of the dark side. Thank you very much.